Here's a look at character creation. You know, that thing we're all gonna spend about two hours in. I'm happy to say that the character creator is more detailed than ever, with even more sliders for adjustments and choices than in previous Dragon Age games. And even better, the hair has proper physics. In the time that we had, I was focused on creating an elven rook, but don't worry, I also made sure to look at the canary and the dwarf specific options like beards and horns. There'll be timestamps if you wanna skip ahead for those. Enchantment? Before we go any further, let me just give a little bit of a disclaimer. Everything you see in my Veilguard videos is my honest impressions. EA were kind enough to invite me to this event and cover my travel costs. No gold has exchanged hands for any of the praise that I have, and I'm not in any way obliged to give only positive feedback. These are my real thoughts, and personally, any criticism that I have, I always try and make it constructive out of respect for the real people that work on these games. We all have different preferences, and that's okay. It's the reason why so many types of games exist. Just please be kind to each other. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go. So character creation starts off with choosing a preset. You can randomize this preset from the main page if you want a starting point that's closer to what you're going for. You can select your pronouns, which change what other characters refer to you as in-game. For the most part, when I was playing, I found that most of the time the characters just call you Rook in most cases, so it's only for very specific scenes that this will come into play. To customize each preset further, you then select between three different head presets, moving the slider to adjust the influence of each. This is, again, more of a starting point, but I did find it gave me some more of a general idea of what I wanted my character to look like. And yes, some of these presets are what you might refer to as cursed. Some of them aren't winning any beauty contests. But hey, you're creating a fantasy character who can be whoever you want them to be. There are two types of people when it comes to character creation. Those that spend hours customizing every pore of their character's face into beautiful perfection, and then the others that test character creators to their very limits to create the most ungodly, horrible spawn that they can. I think that's the mark of a good character creator, when it's possible to create ugly characters as well as generically beautiful ones. And I look forward to seeing your cursed creations. It's good to see a mix of racial influences and moods to the presets. I especially like seeing more strong, determined faces that don't necessarily look aged. It might just be me and the time restrictions I had, but I did find it was difficult to get characters with thin lips to look good. Most of the presets were for full-lipped characters, and the bone structure just didn't seem to suit the thinner lip designs. At any time, you can also disable the hair, or, as I like to call it, Solus vision. You become the egg and see details that might be hidden under hairstyles. There's a range of skin tones to choose from, and you can also slide up and down the melanin, as well as selecting an undertone for each colour too. There's a whole variety of different complexions, including rosacea, freckles, uneven skin tones, birthmarks, dark circles, wrinkles, and acne. I did like that there were more options than we usually see in character creation for slightly wrinkled skin. In a lot of character creators, you have a choice between either looking about 15 years old or 90. There's nothing in between. There's also vitiligo sliders, which are very subtle on the paler skin, so I didn't really see the effects of those. And now we get into the submenus for further customizing all of the individual features. So if you weren't happy with how something looked tinkering with the original presets, you can refine it further here. You can change the protrusion of a lot of different face parts. You can even have a double chin, which I think was great since quite often in games, if you've chosen a heavier set character, it seems that you don't have any options for bigger faces to match it so it never quite fits in with your body. One of my favorite features is that we can also view our character under different lighting settings in the game, which is really helpful. I don't know about you, but I definitely made some choices in previous Dragon Age games character creators that I regretted as soon as I got into sunlight. You can adjust an Adam's apple with the larynx slider. The sculpt section I wasn't expecting, but it gives you more control over how the hair rests on your head. So if you're finding that certain parts of your hairstyle are clipping, you can actually fine tune them to fit perfectly. And again, for the body, there are a whole bunch of different presets and I was really happy to see loads of varied choices. Even within those starting categories, there's so much representation of different body types. Because I also want to be able to crush my enemies between my thighs. It's not a big ask. You have a choice of three different types of undergarments. Not sure what kind of cutscenes you'd be seeing those in. You can even choose to have your chesticles out as part of your undergarments. And then they again have this triangle system where you can customize between three different body presets. 
before going in at the next stage and fine-tuning them in the proportions menu. Of course, there's full customization of the eyes, right down to the eyelids themselves. You can have independent control of each eye, including the color, and the eyes can be unnatural colors too, including a solus-like purple. There's a couple of presets to get you started too. You can even change the color of the actual bodies of the eyes themselves, or have them be bloodshot. Stuff like this is so good to see, as it can really tell a backstory for your character beyond a polished, generically attractive hero. One of my pet peeves is a lack of thick eyebrows in games. I'm done with the 90s pencil brows, especially for female characters, and I can thankfully confirm that there's a whole bunch of bushy brow choices. You can even have a monobrow if you so wish. Your eyelashes and your eyebrows can also be changed to match the colour of your hair, or not at all. There's a range of lashes to choose from. I've got to say I wasn't particularly a fan of the lashes. All of them had quite a blocky look to them but I suppose the intention is that we're never gonna see them this close up very often, and they need to stand out in cutscenes from further away. Loads of different nose shapes and options to customize them. You can even have asymmetrical parts of your nose as well as crooked noses. Personally, I'm looking forward to making a canary who looks like he's been in one too many tavern brawls. Again, I'm not sure if it's just due to the facial structure options I chose, but I had trouble creating smaller, more dainty lips that didn't have this puckered effect. But with more time, I'm sure this is something you could probably tweak earlier on in character creation. And here's my menu. As a haver of pointy ears, I've been waiting for years to customize ear options. So this is a dream come true. You can even have totally asymmetrical ears, as well as cauliflower ears. And even more my dream come true, I'm gonna yap on about hair. And before you start, it's not just because I'm a woman. The hair physics is the best I've seen, and it's not even just for show here in character creation. The hair will move with you in-game whilst you're in combat, swinging over your shoulders and gliding over armour and shoulder pieces. I'm honestly so impressed with what they've managed to do. In Dragon Age, we're also used to being treated to the choice of either a poop bun on the top of your head or a can I speak to your manager fringe. But times have changed, my friends. Times have changed. There are loads of different hair types represented. The curls and the dreads are gorgeous, and there's even proper long hair. The plaits also actually look like proper plaits and have dimension to them. A lot of games will shy away from longer hairstyles, typically things that go longer than shoulder length due to the difficulty of clipping with armor, but they've managed to pull it off somehow. Another big change is the ability to have unnatural hair colors. Maybe your character has time to dye their hair in between sessions saving the world, or it's a fantasy world, I guess, so heck, I'm just gonna believe that it grows out of my head that color. There's a lot of different eye makeup styles, from something subtle to things that look more equivalent to a face paint look. You can choose how your makeup reacts to the light, although I was struggling to see much of a difference between the types. I'm guessing the glitter is only really noticeable when you have a very bright saturated colour, or maybe on darker skin tones. For tattoos, we have facial and body tattoos. Here's a scroll through all of the different options. A lot of these seem to be available regardless of your character's race, although some might be Dalish specific. Look. I know the concerns after that baby-faced canary was released. They had us worried that everyone would look like smooth, pouting cover models. But there's quite a few different racial presets available for a more rugged look, if that's what you prefer. And it's possible to have a more weathered and battle-worn canary. The complexions also seem to change how the horns blend into the forehead area. I will say, there's quite an awkward transition between the skin and the horn that I think contributes to the giant forehead effect that everyone is talking about right now. Lots of variety, from full ram horns to devil to worn or broken ones. The canary hairstyles have been adapted to fit around the horns and cover up some of the awkward forehead, if you want. The females share a lot of the same hairstyle options as the other races, but a few less of the long, hanging hairstyles, presumably that's due to difficulties with the horns and the physics. The female canary definitely favour more of the side-swept hairstyles and the braided styles. For our vertically challenged friends, they share a lot of the same choices with other races as well. But, of course, I had to show you the beard options. And the beards flap around magnificently with the physics too. Again, female dwarves just seem to share most of the same 88 hairstyles with the other races, so not too many changes there. 
And that's pretty much it for aesthetics. After the appearance, you then choose your class. Each of them have an aspirational armor set so you can see what you might look like at high level. Backstory and faction choices also change your character's surname in game and have their own perks. There are six difficulty settings. Storyteller, Keeper, Adventurer, Underdog, Nightmare, and Unbound. Unbound being the one that lets you choose and customize your own settings. For voices, there are two masculine and two more feminine sounding voices. Two of them are American and two of them are British. The British accent does have a slight northern twang though. The next part we're not actually allowed to show any footage of, but I can say that you input some information from previous games about your characters and the story choices you made. And that's pretty much it. What kind of character are you going to make? Do you have a backstory in mind for them already? Or do you know exactly how they're going to look? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. I'm mainly a Twitch streamer, so you can catch me live most days of the week on twitch.tv slash Come say hi. And as always, kindest regards from your elven queen.